What is going on guys? Tanner Flowers coming back at you not too far from home. This morning I find myself in a beautiful little town called Mineral Bluff, Georgia. And this is quite a different setting from Scottsdale, Arizona. But my friend Cindy has just purchased this brand new three-story cabin you see right here behind me. And it's overlooking. I don't even know what those mountains are. I just know it's beautiful. And I also know that when Cindy called me up just a few short weeks ago, she says, Tanner, this brand new cabin's got a crawl space. It doesn't have any foundation vents. And whenever you go inside this home, the muskiness and the dirt smell coming from underneath the home will nearly knock you down. I said, I hear it every single day of the week, Cindy. And don't you worry. I'll come out. I'll diagnose the situation. Come up with a resolution. And before I show you guys what this crawl space looks like right now, let me show you what it looked like whenever I first inspected it just a few short weeks ago. Guys, we are currently underneath a brand new project for my friend Cindy. We are way up here in Mineral Bluff, Georgia. Let me show you this view real fast. Check that out, guys. You want to talk about a beautiful place. We're at it right now. And we're inside here now getting everything prepped for our brand new project. Misty is back here chiseling all kinds of excess mortar and concrete. Nick's over there right now getting all that plastic that's currently down pulled back so we can level up this ground a bit. And guys, stay tuned because in a few short days, we're gonna be bringing you another crazy transformation brought to you by none other than the Crawl Space Artist right here at Tennessee Technicians. And for most of us watching guys, that right there, that is your typical crawl space. However, for the few of us across the nation, the few that have decided they want the absolute best crawl space money can buy, that have chosen to pick up that phone and call me at 423-503-0512, they get exactly what they want. And if you're not prepared for what you usually see inside of all of our crawl space projects, I hope you're sitting down because when I open this door right here, it's getting ready to sweep you off your feet. No one in the world likes working inside of a dark crawl space. And if you are brand new to our finished project videos here at Tennessee Technicians, then all you gotta do is look over here to your side, flip a light switch, and guys, you got lights throughout your entire crawl space on each and every single project we commit to doing. And for starters, guys, these walls are gonna appear a bit different from what you're used to seeing in most of our crawl space encapsulation videos. Notice these walls of the crawl space were studded out with wood and the actual concrete portion of the solid wall only goes to where you see where we've ran our poly. You never, never, never want to bring that poly up and onto your wood because all of that moisture that is being held underneath that vapor barrier will then be held against your wood and it will rot your wood out at speeds that your brain will not even comprehend. I have seen crawl space projects where we have had to rebuild the entire home's floor system in homes that were built after the year 2000. So guys, please make sure you're not attaching your poly to your existing wood structure of your home. Now, I'm not sure how many of you watching are aware, but if any of you have seen that 40 foot long pondless waterfall that we just finished building in Scottsdale, Arizona, well, Nick and Misty, they've been over here working underneath this crawl space while I've been out in Arizona working on that feature. And if you guys seen in those before pictures, all of this uneven ground and all of that rubble, look at what a fantastic job those two did getting these floors smoothed out for my friend Cindy. And as you guys make your way up here onto this embankment with me, you will see right here in between these two joists where I actually had to frame in one of our exhaust fans. And if you guys can see on that opposite wall way down there behind me, Nick actually had to install the exact same thing I did right here beside us down there on that wall as well. Because keep in mind, this home had absolutely zero foundation vents whenever we started this project. And that was the culprit behind most of those musky odors that Cindy was getting up inside the actual living quarters of this home. So take a look at what we had to do just to be able to install these exhaust fans. Okay guys, this house did not have any foundation vents and it needs a minimum of two of our humidistat fans for the exhaust on our new crawl space encapsulation project. So 
This is where the first fan is going to be. I've already got everything installed on the inside like I showed you, but I had to come out here, mark off everything where our outside bin is going to be mounted, and then I had to go in here and cut all these lines, and I have literally been chiseling here for the past two hours. Just, I mean, can you see this? Whoa, can you see all this pile of shavings here? Check this out. I've been chiseling all that by hand, guys, and as soon as we finish this, We've got to do one more on the other side. Man, I had no idea we were going to encounter this tedious of a situation, but it is what it is, guys, and we've got to get it taken care of, and we'll talk to you again here soon. <laughs> this project, it forced me to turn into a carpenter on you guys. And now, let me take you guys throughout the rest of this crawl space. You can see the solid poured walls of this foundation, and then look at how nice and sharp Nick and Misty have got that wall edge all the way down and all the way around this entire crawl space encapsulation great great work guys and although this crawl space might be pretty tall whenever you enter inside of it when you get up here and crawl along the front wall of this home the joists are literally rubbing my shoulder blades along each pass that i make underneath each individual joist and right over here to my left that's our big Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier. Let's roll over here and take a look at it. Now guys, you'll always see us installing either our Santa Fe Compact Unit or our big Santa Fe Advanced Dehumidifier system. And I was kind of at a toss up on which unit to use, but when you take this height factor into account, guys, I made the executive decision to install our big boy unit under here. And just like you'll see on all of our projects, you wanna make sure that your switch is set to auto. And then right down here on your dial, remember if six o'clock's right down here in the bottom middle, we always like to set hours right here between seven and 7.30. And then all of that water is draining out of that dehumidifier right there, going down here inside of this right here condensate pump before me. And that is then sending that water up and back there into a P-trap where it is then dispensed from the home via the main drain line of the home, where now any of this water that is captured and sent out of this home will no longer be problematic underneath this crawl space for my friend Cindy. And as we continue the tour, of our latest finished project video. Take note of how low this section of the home was right here before me and also pay close attention and notice all the detail work and how not one single corner of quality was cut in order to make it happen. And then also make note that we set all of our exhaust fans to around 35% and if you'll notice not only this one but that one way down there on the opposite wall that I've already showed you as well both of those units are already shut off and they're both set at 35%. That is because right before I came down here and started filming, this crawl space's humidity levels were already down to 27%, guys. That is beyond perfect. Another thing that I want to point out on this project is that Cindy had absolutely zero floor insulation whenever she purchased this home a few weeks ago. And now look, guys, we have installed our R19 poly encapsulated floor insulation just like we've been installing underneath crawl spaces since 2008. As many of you have already found out, here in 2020, everybody's got an opinion on crawl space floor insulation these days. But if you ever ask Tanner Flowers, I'll tell you, screw everybody's opinion and screw yours if you disagree because I'm gonna let you in on some facts right here in southeast Tennessee since 2008 when it's cold outside, when it's turning winter right here in our area and all the crawl spaces that we do not install that floor insulation that you see right there, but we do all of this other work, I will see a three to six degree difference in temperatures from the crawl space and inside the actual living quarters of the home. Now, hold that thought. In every single crawl space that we install this R19 poly encapsulated floor insulation, in the same exact scenario that I just rattled off, I see an 11 to 13 degree difference, showing you therefore how much heat is actually being kept inside the living quarters of your home and not being allowed to escape down here in the crawl space. And unless you plan on staying a few nights of the year down here in your crawl space, I wouldn't worry too much about heating and cooling this sucker if I was you. So guys, if you too are the homeowner watching this video right now, 
that is currently battling moisture problems of your own, don't hesitate to reach out to me and give me a call at 423-503-0512. And while you're at it, head on over to crawlspaceartist.com, spend some time of your own researching these projects, learn as much as you can so that you too don't become the next victim of some Joe Blow piece of crap that's just looking to get him enough beer money to last him through the weekend. I appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us on another one of our finished project videos. And as always, guys, I can't wait to talk to each of you inside that next video.